Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So today I am going to be repotting a couple of my fly traps. They are going to be the fly trap cold files that I've got. So I'll select a couple of those and repot them. Um, because I've been out here this morning and um, I'm doing my like last bits of repotting of Saracenia. And at the same time I redid my bunny bog because it desperately needed doing because the fly traps had been kind of buried over a couple of years of growth. So I repot that and it's not as brilliant as it looked before but um, I'll show you that in a second as well and whilst I was in here I also wanted to put some of my fly traps into bigger pots as they're growing up uh, so it'll make a really nice display obviously comes spring um, so it's nearly spring now the best time to repot your fly traps is in spring or late winter just before they start growing so it's important to do this before they start flowering and before they have too much growth on them that they're hard to handle the best time to do it is when they're just in dormancy, just before they start growing again, so it's just easier to handle the plant as well and causes less stress, especially doing it this time of year. So I'll just be showing you how to do that. So I'll just quickly show my bunny bog. So as you can see, it's not looking as great. Um, before, obviously, I repotted it. All of these PTRs were buried in the soil, so all you had was just the little traps out the end, and bringing them up again to repot them into the right place. So you can see actually now the new growth that was coming through beforehand obviously all this was buried before and then there's a small baby one at the back and I've changed it around a bit so I have taken out the seracene that were in here I've kept a couple of the drosera but um, I've made it more into like a that's like a bunny burrow so I've got the bunny with the burrow and I've um, um, planted some uticularia around the edge here so hopefully that will come out obviously in the spring as well when everything starts growing again but I've placed a bit of the moss back around and even though it's not looking the greatest at the moment because it's been recently redone, it will hopefully promise to have a great display in the summer. So I think the two fly traps that I've selected to pot up is going to be my red piranha and my beastie boy. So I'll be putting these into um, 8.5 centimeter pots like this one. So this is my phalanx. I did this one about a month ago now and this is looking really good. So it fills up the pot really nicely. And as a lot of people know, this is my favourite cultivar and it has got some great growth. The, the colours and the teeth that it has, or the lashes, in the um, spring, summer active growing season are phenomenal. So definitely my favourite there. So I am going to put up the Beastie Boy because it is just a really large cultivar as it is. And as you can see, it's filled up the pot nicely. And the Red Piranha because every year it always has these little babies in the pot here and they're just great to divide up um so i've already got a couple from last year when i um repotted it and it's just a great plant to have it's a really nice color as well especially this time of year so this is the pot i'm going to use and it's a little bit taller so fly traps appreciate being in a taller pot as they have got quite long root systems so they like to be in a taller pot and it's a little bit wider than the last just so the growth can um spread out so the substrate that i'm going to use is um, peat moss and perlite so looks like this and this is the substrate that I use for all my Venus fly traps as well as Saracenia um, alternatively with um, Venus fly traps um, you could also use um, sphagnum moss so long fibre sphagnum moss which looks like this so both of those are good options for uh, Venus fly traps as a potting medium but I like to use the peat and perlite so I have now filled up the pot full of my potting medium but I'm just going to put that to the side one second while I get the plant out of the pot. So as you can see here it's got some Drosia spatulata around the edges from where my plants have self-seeded. So start off by gently teasing the plant out of the pot. So careful not obviously to... Uh, you might need to work it around just the sides because you don't want it all to fall out in one splodge and then just gently tip it out without being too harsh with it like so so this is the plant out of the pot and then as you can see the roots are already coming out the bottom so you're just gently going to prise it apart so mine have all this moss coverage which is just natural moss that grows over the top it's not anything that I put in there and just gently ease it apart so already you can see the beautiful white rhizome so this is how big the rhizome of this Beastie Boy is. It's actually got two parts here. So there's a bit, this bit up here, 
and then down here as well which is really nice and just continue by taking away the old soil as gently as you can from around the edge like so you can leave some of the old substrate on but I'm just going to take mine off for purposes of showing the rhizome so just really gently take it away from the roots like so and then this is what I've got so this is a really healthy rhizome so if you are worried about your fly trap at any point during the year taking out and seeing this really nice white rhizome is perfect to see how healthy your fly trap is so the white rhizome indicates that your fly trap is healthy as well as um, obviously it's got quite a bit of a root system here so looking really nice and I could easily divide that up because you can actually see the two parts of the rhizome that it's got here but I'm going to keep mine as a whole because I want mine to be a nice lovely great clump of plant here and I'm just going to remove some of the dead bits so if I see you got any dead leaves at the top just take the time to prise them easily away from the plant and get rid of any rotten bits as well just to stop obviously it spreading throughout the plant. So now it's just a case of placing the plant into the medium so with the fly traps I usually make a deep enough hole it might require some of the substrate to come out and then like packing it around the plant afterwards but I make a deep hole in the center of the soil so you can see what um, which way the rhizome will go by the growth so my rhizome is going that way and that's where all the new growth which you can see just here is coming out from so you could either do that to center in the pot to decide which way it goes but because I'm putting this in the center and it's got quite a bit of room to grow I'm not really fussed about which way I'm putting it and then just lower it in the soil you don't want to you want to cover the rhizome but not burying this top of the leaves so you don't want the whole plant to be buried you want the center to be showing just so the leaves are able to grow freely obviously it'll stop it from rotting as well and just placing the soil around the plant doesn't matter if soil goes in the traps this is absolutely fine traps usually do close about three four times before dying off anyway but they are not too fussed because new ones will grow anyway obviously just be careful not to um, be too rough and fill them all up as you can see most of them are still open um, I think there's only just this one at the back here that had a bit of soil but other than that the plant has done really well okay and then this is the finished result of potting up the plant so you can see that I haven't buried the center this is where the new leaves are coming from and the plant has got loads of room to grow in this pot so this is a really good example and then when it starts growing the PTLs will be higher so they won't be laying down like this and it's got loads more room to grow so that's an example of the BC boy being potted up so now I'm going to do the same with my red piranha so the red piranha also has a dormant banata in there I'm not sure which one it is I think it came in the pot originally so after me repotting it it's still in the same pot it's the same process as before and just gently tease it out by pressing gently against the sides of the pot and then it'll help it eventually slide out like so and then same process of just breaking the soil away gently around the sides so after you break the soil away you can see the top of the rhizome again so really healthy and obviously the red pigmentation is just really lovely it's even showing up on the rhizome here and then just continue to take it away so just going to continue gently taking the soil out from around the sides like so so you can see here there's a little baby one which is a little division and there is its own root system which I might put in the same pot as the red piranha just because it's so small and then gently tease away the soil that's around the base and it should just fall apart like so and then you can see where its rhizome is going as well so you can see the older part of the rhizome here and then it's growing and the new leaves are here so really nice small but beautiful plant and these ones are a lot slower growing I think it is due to the red coloration and I'm just going to do the same with taking the rotten dead parts from around the plant which is easier to do when they're unpotted like this just so you could just peel it off so this is the plant 
and I'm going to do the same process and put it in the next size up pot. So using the same substrate I am going to plant up my red primer. So this again has got lovely root system and a lovely white rhizome. So same process I am just going to make a deep hole just so I can feed in all the roots into the middle of the pot and lower the roots down like so just gently guiding them in and placing the soil around as I go so just fill it up again to the same level so you've got the top of the plant still showing this is a dark plant it's a little bit harder to see I think but you've still got the new growth which you can see there and obviously the older growth around the outside and obviously if you need to use more soil then just place it around the top I'm okay with what I've got at the moment if I just even it out as I'm placing it around and as you can see it's really nice in that middle so I'm hoping this one was going to put on some nice big growth this year because it had some really nice big growth with some long PTLs last year and I'll show you in just what a year the divisions so these are two baby divisions which I just took off the plant really nice white little rhizomes for young baby plants and they've got their own roots so I'm going to also feed these in one each side of the pot because they're very small I could put them in their own pot I did last year when it gave me divisions but this year because um, there's a lot of room in this pot I'm just going to gently feed them in and again just hold it up whilst I place the soil around like that and then the same with the other one I'm just gently going to make a little hole and feed in the root just so it will stand on its own like so so this is the red piranha with its two little youngs and then just place the label back in there then I'm just going to water both of the pots through just so they're nice and moist and the soil isn't dry. So I've just had them sitting in rainwater for a while and now the substrate is completely saturated and that is literally as simple as. So as long as I've seen after you plant your fly traps that the soil is then saturated again just to obviously keep them moist without letting them dry out. Just continue the normal care for the fly trap and with the little um, banata and spatulata that was on top of the soil if anybody wondered where they went I decided to put them up in their own pot just so they aren't getting in the way of the fly traps so you can see the spatulata around the edge and then the baby banata in there so that is potting up a venus fly trap okay so that was a rundown on how to repot your venus fly trap so it's a really simple and easy process and it's also a perfect time to take propagations from your fly traps as well, especially this time of year just before they start growing again. So you can take things from leaf pullings or you could even divide up your rhizome and take division from your plant as well, which I will be doing in the near future as well. So for now, thank you very much for watching this video and I hope you have a great day.